emergency ventilator dilting. <laughs> Greetings, everyone. My name is Dr. Christopher Cavanaugh, and I've been invited to talk a little about an emergency ventilator building initiative here at ESU involving a small but growing network of ESU faculty across various departments. We are doing what we can to help address the profound shortage of these life-saving devices amid the COVID crisis. Here is the latest version of our ventilator and I just finished building a few days ago. The ventilator designs I'm focusing on are simple, cheap, and most importantly, they of course need to work. Simplicity in its electrical and mechanical design allows for emergency repair in the field. It also means all other things being equal, less can go wrong. The construction price is in the $100 range with readily available parts from Home Depot, as can be seen being purchased here. What I'd like to do now is take you on a brief time-lapse tour of the latter half of the last four weeks. This video shows my assistant for the latter half of the project, Professor Patricia Varkados of ESU's Digital Media and Technology Department, who I was lucky to meet at the president's new faculty reception last year. Patricia is, by the way, an absolutely brilliant filmmaker, uh, both on a creative and intellectual level. In fact, she edited this video that I'm about to show. Over the last three weeks, she's come over to my house five times, spending half of her day each time helping to build ventilators. Here's the video. Hold on to your books. Do you want to say anything? This is history, Chris. Oh. <laughs> the V2. <laughs> so, let's see if we can adjust the speed here. So. Absolutely. Okay, get my number. I'm rolling, just so you know. All right. Take one. That's, that's freaking awesome. That's what we want. Yes. This is way better than the yes. This is the way to go. This is freaking yes. awesome. <laughs> I will now briefly walk you through the chronology of the events leading up to where we are now. Here is the very first ventilator I built. The following video shows me testing it on our lab spirometer, which is a device for analyzing respiratory airflow. Upon running a battery of spirometry tests, I noticed its airflow waveforms needed to be more sinusoidal, like shown here in this figure. This is particularly true for COVID patients under general anesthesia, for example, during endotracheal intubation, where the respiratory pattern is very close to that of a sine wave. This led to a radical redesign of the ventilator. The next prototype shown here uh, in this next slide in, uh, solved that problem. The following video uh, explains the theory behind it. Here's a, another uh, view showing its relative size next to the Coke. So what this is essentially doing is it's taking circular functions and converting them into linear displacements. So 
for example, if we treat, when we stop the unit and when this screw is at the right, say it's at the, uh, the east compass point, we treat that as a height of zero. So when it goes to 90 degrees, sine of 90 is one, so that would be a height of one, and then back to zero or 180 degrees, 270 degrees, and it's at negative one. So it's oscillating uh, as a sine wave, as a function of the angle. So we adjust the frequency of the sine wave by the digital controls and then the amplitude, which corresponds to the respiratory depth, is controlled just simply by moving the, this pin. So now you just simply relocate the pin to a different location. It simply adjust the amplitude of the sine wave for the respiratory depth. And that's uh, basically how that, uh, that sets. At this point in the project, Patricia joined the team. Here she's helping me make the cover. Patricia also made a number of very important uh, engineering contributions in implementing my design. On April 17th, the VentaBuddy Mini, which is what I call it, was demonstrated to the ICU respiratory team at the LVHN main campus at Cedar Crest. We we're very interested in seeing it. Darlene graciously connected me with them. The respiratory team at LVHN were very enthused after the demo. They said its maximum use would be in a code blue at their hospital internally and in EMS. They also said it would be great for hospitals in the transport of ventilated patients, like, for instance, a nurse having to transport a COVID patient from the ICU to CAT scan. This is what Patricia and I put together the prior Sunday. She helped cut the hole for the piston assembly. This is one of the trickier steps in the process. Over the next two days, I finished the rest of it. This digital version of the Mach 4 has digital controls and a backup battery switchover and alarm if the AC goes out. Additionally, I would like to thank the following people who all played crucial roles, most notably across departments here at ESU. I would like to thank the president, the provost, and my chair for their ongoing amazing support and encouragement. Stella is helping me now 3D print an important part of the ventilator. Thank you.